Governorship of California is the top Democrat of the House Intelligence Committee. He's joining us from Philadelphia right now. Uh, Congressman, thanks very much for joining us. Uh, let's get the, the latest on this prisoner exchange, if you will, the, uh, the two hostages held by ISIS, maybe in exchange for that woman who's a, t a convicted terrorist in Jordan. What's the latest? What are you hearing about that? Well, we're staying on top of it, and I was just briefed this morning uh, through the Intelligence Committee. Uh, there's nothing that I can report yet. It's still, I think, very murky, and obviously all of us are very concerned about the well-being and, and the livelihood of both the Jordanian pilot and the Japanese journalist. Uh, unfortunately, the track record of those that ISIS parades uh, in the yellow suits has not been very good, and a lot of what ISIS is trying to do is trying to recruit more followers, trying to terrorize people. Uh, and that makes them a very difficult uh, group uh, to have any confidence they're going to release these people unharmed. So no word yet, and uh, a lot of anxious uh, families in Jordan and Japan, and we're watching and uh, trying to be of help in any way we can. Jordan, which, as you know, is a very, very close friend of the United States. King Abdullah works closely with the U.S. Uh, they, they have been asking ISIS through indirect channels for at least proof of life that the Jordanian fighter pilot is alive. Do you know whether or not he is alive? Uh, is there any evidence that this pilot is still there? Uh, well, if I can't uh, comment in particular, you know, we're obviously trying to help Jordan in every way possible, and I think the situation is still murky. Uh, Jordan is in a very difficult position. They have to uh, ensure they take every effort to get their pilot back alive, uh, but uh, it's very hard, uh, and I think without proof of life, uh, Jordan uh, can't possibly move forward. Uh, the worst case scenario would be for Jordan uh, to release this woman only to find out later that uh, ISIS has either killed the pilot or kills the pilot uh, thereafter. Uh, so I think Jordan very sensibly is going to insist on proof of life, uh, and I'm not sure that much progress has been made along that front. Uh, so uh, I think we have to respect whatever decision Jordan makes. They're a rare island of stability after the Arab Spring in the region. And a key partner, and this is obviously going to put a lot of pressure on their continued willingness to participate in the campaign against ISIS. The last I heard, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that ISIS was maybe, maybe willing to exchange the, uh, the Japanese journalist for the convicted female terrorist in Jordan. But ISIS was never uh, going to include, at least the, the, the indications I was, was hearing, include the, uh, the Jordanian fighter pilot as part of the deal. I don't think Jordan is going to accept the deal to free this terrorist in exchange uh, only for the Japanese journalist. But tell me if ISIS is even willing to think about releasing that fighter pilot. I don't know the answer, Wolf, and I think you're right. In terms of the public reporting on this, I haven't seen any public statements by ISIS that they're willing to exchange the pilot for al Rashawi. Uh, if they're not, though, then I don't think this goes forward. I don't see how Jordan. Uh, can possibly make any deal that doesn't include their own pilot. Uh, and we can certainly understand that situation. If this were an American uh, captured uh, service member, we would be doing everything possible, and there'd be no deal without their release. So uh, I, I don't think ISIS has made that offer, certainly not publicly anyway. Uh, and I don't, I don't see how anything could go forward unless the Jordanians can get their pilot back. Yeah, we certainly hope uh, that uh, the Japanese and the Jordanian hostages being held by ISIS are released and released quickly, uh, very quickly on Kirkuk. Absolutely. What's what's going on in that oil-rich town in northern Iraq right now? Because we had been getting these reports. ISIS was launching some sort of attack there. Well, I think ISIS is feeling a lot of pressure. They've lost uh, ground uh, in the Kurdish areas. They lost some ground to Iraqi special forces. They had the symbolic loss uh, in Kobani. Uh, at the same time, they're very lethal. Uh, but they are worried, I think, about pressure being put on Mosul and supply lines being cut off to Missoula, and this may be an effort not so much to reclaim territory around Kirkuk uh, as to put pressure on the Peshmerga, relieve some of the pressure they're starting to feel uh, in Missoula. Uh, the other significant development, Wolf, I think we have to keep an eye on too, though, is this allegation of a massacre of Sunnis uh, by a Shia militia uh, in the presence of Iraqi troops. If that proves to be correct, it would be a tremendous setback uh, to us and to the Iraqis on the political front, which is just as important as the military front, because it may lead Sunnis elsewhere to believe that they can't part ways with ISIS and expose themselves to the dangers of the Shia militia. That's a very uh, potentially uh, a disastrous development. Uh, do you know how many people were massacred? 
Uh, I don't know. I, I've just seen the public reports on this. Obviously, we're trying to get confirmation, and this is of the utmost seriousness to the al Abadi government. Uh, if, in fact, there has been this massacre after the liberation of this town in the Diyala province, uh, it's going to be a tremendous setback for the cause. It certainly is. It's going to undermine uh, the new Iraqi government, uh, and it's going to make matters which are horrible right now even so much worse. You're absolutely right, uh, right Congressman. Thanks very much for joining us.